Alright guys, how's it going? So this video is pretty much orientated towards new users in Blender, specifically if you're learning how to model. So if you know how to model a default cube, you're probably more than advanced already. <laughs> so this might not be the video for you, to be honest. So today I'm going to model this lamp. I love the lamp. I'll walk you through the process, we'll model the asset, we'll set up a background, we'll texture, and hopefully by the end of the video, you'll end up with a render, something very similar. Now just to give you a heads up, I actually got inspiration from Behance, there was a very nice wood project, and I thought that looks great. I kind of tweaked it a little bit, it's just in case it looks familiar. So I'll open Blender, and I'll select the default cube, and I'll tab into edit mode, because obviously we're going to be editing the mesh. I'll press 3 to select polygons, make sure I've got the selection tool, I'll select the top polygon. I'll then use the move tool and I'll move this down. Now I don't have any plans here, I'm kind of freestyling this to be honest, and you're more than welcome to kind of experiment. So I'll press A to select all of the mesh, I'll come to the bevel here on the left hand side, and I'll do a very fine bevel. And the reason I want to do this is, I want the render engine to catch the edges. So I'll bring up the dialog box, and I'll put the number of segments to 12. Perfect. The next thing I'll do is I'll press A to select all of the mesh and I'm going to duplicate it. So I'll press Shift and D. Now when you duplicate an object you can freely move it around and sometimes it's annoying to be honest. So I can constrain this to an axis. So if I press Z, I'm on the Z. Obviously you have Y and X. So I'll press Z and I'll move it just above. Something like that. And that's the middle section, and I'll repeat this one last time, so I'll press Shift and D to duplicate, I'll press Z to constrain, and there we go, we pretty much have the basics of our model. So what I'll do next is I'll press 1 to go into front of the graphic, I'll press Z to bring up the pie menu, and I'll go into wireframe. I'll then press 1 to select points, let's use the selection tool, let's select these points, and then let's move them up. So something like that. So I'm going to select the bottom points here, and I'll move them down. Let's select the middle, let's make the light a little bit far, and that looks perfect. I'll press Z to go into solid view. Now it's a little bit too much like a cube, to be honest. So what I can do here is I can press A to select all of the mesh, and I'm going to press S, and I'm going to scale this down. And the reason I'm doing this is, I don't really want a 4 meter light, to be honest. I want to kind of stay in real world sizes. So that looks fine to me. I'm going to come to the scale tool here on the left hand side and I'm going to bring this in and I'm going to kind of make it more like a rectangle. Perfecto. Now I'm going to break the mesh up a bit, it's very linear so I'll press 3 to select polygons, I'll select the bottom polygon and I'll press L and that'll select the linked mesh. So you can see here it's only selected the bottom part. I'll then come to the loop cut tool and when I hold down the mouse button I can drag this back and forth so I'm going to make this at the back here. I'll press 3 to go into right off the graphic. I'll press Z, I'll go into wireframe, I'll press 1 to go into points, and I'll select these bottom points here. And what I'll do is I'll just quickly move them up. And this means our cable could go in here, and it kind of takes this straight, sharp angle look off the model. And that looks fine to me. So I'll press Z, I'll go into solid view, and I'm going to change the middle half here. So I'll select this polygon, so I'll press 3. I'll press L to select linked, and I'll scale this in, so I'll press S to scale. When you scale in, you're technically scaling the whole object, so you can see there's now a gap. So I'll press 1 to go into front of the graphic, I'll press Z, I'll go into wireframe, and I'll select these top polygons here. Now it's a little bit too thin, I've scaled that a little bit too much, but it does leave a nice edge around the model, so we'll see how it goes. We'll press tab to go into object mode, I'll Let's go into solid view and let's see what we're getting. Uh, it's a little bit too thin for my liking, but uh, it's fine, we're kind of freestyling, we can play around. So the next thing I need to do is add in a ground object. So I'll press Shift and A, I'm in object mode, and I'll add in a plane. I'll press 1 to go into the front view. Let's move this down. Now, I won't perfectly align it, I'll leave a slight gap, and it'll kind of look like this feet then. I'll then press S to scale this up. I'll tab into edit mode, I'll press 2 to select edges, and I'll select this back edge. And what I'll do is I'll do a quick extrusion here, I'll select this edge, I'll do a bevel, very fine bevel, and then I'll put the number of segments up to 12 again. 
and this will act like a nice smooth background for a photography. I can tab any object mode, I'm going to right click on the object and I'm going to enable shade smoothing and this will get rid of this kind of fragmented look. And that's us, we're pretty much ready. We only need a cable and we only really need to add a little bit of text. So the best way to add a cable to be honest is if I go to add, add on a curve and I'll add on a bezier. And it's kind of already set up for us. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to quickly rotate it. So I'll make it go this direction and then I'll flip it around. I'll just quickly position it. Now, I'm kind of being a little bit loose here, and it's always good to check your viewports because you end up with something like this. <laughs> so let's straighten this up. Now, if you've never used a Bezier curve, it's very simple. Uh, it kind of reminds me a little bit of Photoshop or maybe Adobe Illustrator. So that'll do for the moment. I'm not entirely happy with the positioning, but let's just fix it. Now if you press tab, it'll actually take you into the edit mode and what you can do here is you can actually manipulate these points very easily. So you can move it back and forth like this. If you press E, it'll extrude it. So it'll extrude it out. Just keep an eye on the gaps. You'll notice that the arrows get larger and smaller and that just means the polygons get stretched. So you want to keep the arrows round about the same distance and that'll be perfectly fine. I'll tab into object mode. I'll come here on the right hand side and go to the object data properties. I'll drop down the geometry and I'll just do a slight bevel, so I'll make it something like 0 0.01 maybe. Yeah, there we go, that's fine. And we now have our cable. Now it goes away into the scene and I'm happy with that. It could maybe go to a wall socket, but maybe you want to put it perfectly on the ground. Completely up to you. Let me grab my coffee here. So the next thing we need to do is add in text. Now this is an additional step to be honest. So if I go to add, I can add in text. I can press tab. Now I've made plenty of text tutorials, so I'll kind of briefly go over this. And all I'll do is I'll just type something like light. I'll then come to the extrusion options and I'll extrude it. I'll press tab to drop the tool. And then I'll scale this in. Now I don't want this logo very prominent, so I'm going to scale this pretty small. And I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees this direction. I'll press 1 to go into the top view and let's just quickly position this. Now like I mentioned, I really don't want it to stick out in the mesh, I want it to kind of be very subtle. So there we go, so there we go, we'll just quickly move it into position. And that's us, we have our model. Now this is always a good opportunity to save the mesh and the reason I know this is, is because when I'd done this tutorial earlier on, I went to separate the mesh and it crashed. <laughs> so I'm making this for about the fifth time. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select the light and I'll tab into edit mode. And I'm going to separate these parts. Now, I'm not very happy with this selection, so I'll press 3 to select polygons. Let's press L to link them and let's scale this out just a little bit here. even and there we go that feels a little bit more balanced now so like i mentioned i'm going to separate these into individual meshes and it means at any point i can quickly move them or i can texture them or i can uv map them so i'm going to select this polygon i'll press l to select linked and then i'll press p to make a separate selection and you'll see here an outliner that gives you a new object and i'll call this the top half i'll select this one here i'll press l linked P for separation, selection, let's call this the middle, and I'll repeat it one last step. And I now do not need this cube object, so I can quickly delete it, and that should be us. Now in terms of the cable and the text, if you know your model's locked down, you can convert them to a mesh. If you want a kind of non-destructive workflow, probably best not converting them. So we'll just leave everything here. So obviously the next step is to texture, and we'll set up a quick render. So this is the part you have a little bit more artistic freedom. And what do I mean by this? Well, you can use a different render engine, Eevee, Cycles, you can change the textures up, but I'll walk you through some of the basics. So I'm going to select the top path. Now this is why I pretty much separated the mesh. 
I'll come to the material on the right hand side and I'll add a new material. Now it's already got one, but what I'm going to do here is I just need a kind of visual reference, so I'm going to go to blue. I'll come to the scene options and I'll change it to the cycles engine. And this means when I jump into the render view, I can get a better view. Now, this has actually added a new material to all of these meshes. So I'm going to select this one. I'll quickly delete the material and I'll add in a new material. I'll go to principal shader and I could probably add in an emission. Now, might not be the best method to be honest. You might be better using a PBR material and setting this up, but this will be fine for the moment. I'll select the bottom half, I'll delete this material because it's, they're technically linked and I'll add in a new material and I'll just give it a different colour just to kind of differentiate what's happening here so I need a really nice background, I'm not entirely happy with the lighting setup and the reason here is I've got this kind of spotlight up here or a point light so I'm going to delete this from the scene and that's pretty cool, we could just use the emission channel to light the scene but it's not the best method to be honest, so what I'm going to do is I'll jump into the shading tab let me join these areas together so we can have a little bit more workspace and I'll go to world and I'll add in an environment light or an HDRI image so I can go to add, search let's look for environment environment texture let's open up now if you don't know where to get an HDRI image just go into HDR Haven just google it, plenty of HDRI images I'll take the colour and I'll put that in. Let's quickly jump back into layout and let's see what kind of scene we're getting. There we go, a kind of better lighting setup. Probably a little bit too direct to be honest, so it might be worth kind of dropping the HDR settings down. So I'll drop this down to 0 0.5. Let's go into layout. So in terms of texture on the object, I'm just actually going to cheat. And I'm just going to go to a website like cotextures.com. I can look through the latest assets or I can obviously go to categories and let's look for a wood and I'll just download this one here at the moment so I'll quickly show you the files I actually downloaded so we have the colour, we have a displacement, a normal and a roughness now I'm going to move these onto my second screens I'm going to select the material I'm going to come into the shading now I'm on the world so I can go to object here and what I can do is I can actually drag these images in so that's the colour, I'll add this to the base colour now, because we use the default cube, the object was already UV mapped, so I don't need to actually do any UV mapping. This is a displacement map, this is a normal map, and I'm actually going to change the colour space to non-colour here. And this is a roughness map. So in terms of the displacement, what I can do here is I can actually add in a displacement map. I can also add in a normal map. Now this is a kind of unnecessary step, but it's always worth doing it. I can take the colour, plug this into the colour of the normal map, I can then take the normal map into the displacement map, and then I can take the displacement and put it into the displacement. Kind of long way around about it, but it works. <laughs> I also have a normal map in terms of here, so again what I can do here is I can add in a normal map. can take the normal map colour, plug this into the colour, and then I can plug this into the normal. Now it's a very fine mesh, that looks great to me. So what I can do here with the roughness map, I can take the colour and I can plug this directly into the roughness channel. And we get something like this, looking good already. It's a bit high in terms of the specular, but I could maybe drop the spec down a little bit quite shiny to be honest. Let's go into layout and what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to select this material, I'll come to the material settings here, I'll copy the material, I'll select the base, come back up here and I'll paste the material. And there we go, we pretty much have textured the object. Now in terms of the cable, you can really play around with this but I'll add in a new material. Let's change this to black. Specular's fine, I could maybe add a little noise map or something. And in terms of the ground, I'll select the ground, I'll add in a new material, and I'll make this black as well, why not? And that's us. We've pretty much set up a nice light render. We can play around a little bit more in terms of the setting. I could maybe make this a bit more metallic. I'll give it a little bit more reflection. 
And all I do is need to set up the camera, but the quick way I do it is, in the viewport, I just select the angle that I like, I press Control, Alt and Zero, that'll bring up the camera, I'll press G, I'll select the camera, I'll press G and I'll move this around, so something like this. I'll then move the background because I'm lazy. In fact, I'll scale it up because I'm extra lazy. And that's us. We have a nice render. I'll press F12, we'll take a look at what it looks like at the end. I could play around with some of the render settings, but I'm happy as it is. I'll press F12 and we'll show you the render once it's completed. So, I'm a bit of an idiot and I forgot to texture the light text. But I'm happy with the render. The cable could maybe do with a little bit being darker. Maybe a little bit of noise. I'm getting noise here in terms of the render. So, just to kind of finish things up. Excuse the noise of my GPU going on fire. <laughs> I've got a 780 Ti and it's not happy at the best of times. So I'm just going to copy this material on the emission channel. I'm going to select the light text. I'll go to new and I'll paste this in. And also what I'll do here is I'll come to the layer settings and I'll enable denoising on the render. And that should be us. Now when it comes to the cable, I think the specular is actually controlling how much light is bouncing off, so I'll drop the specular. There we go, that's a bit better. I'll hit F12. Do me a favour guys, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Twitter, support me on Gumroad, you know what to do. Take care, and now my fan's going to go on fire. <laughs> Cheerio, <laughs> bye.